Hi, I'm Marshall. I'm the owner of Going Gear and I'm here in our store in Smyrna, Georgia. This is the extended review of the Olight M23 Javelot. All right, here we are with the Olight M23 Javelot. Very cool flashlight. Its predecessor, the M22, was a really popular tactical light or just a general use light. It's one that I have in my truck. It's one that I have in my pack. It's just a nice, good all-around light. And they made a lot of improvements with the M23. They bumped up the output, they really bumped up the beam distance, and they made this thing the most durable flashlight they've ever made. So some good information here on the front, 1,020 lumens on max output, 436 meters of beam distance, which is really impressive for a light this size, and 30 hours of runtime on the lowest output. As always, you can get the full specs on our site, goinggear.com. Another thing to call out, they bumped up their warranty not too long ago, up to five years, so it's nice to have that five-year guarantee. So like a lot of their tactical lights, it comes in a nice case. So you got this nice hard case for storage of the light. Going to set some stuff to the side, show you the things that come with it. That's actually the user manual, and they write really good user manuals, so that's definitely worth a look. talks about the interface and warranty and care, and you got some interface or information about some of their other products. Here is the lanyard. The lanyards that they come with are really nice. Olight does a good job on the lanyards. They got this nice strong attachment point. They're nice and comfortable. You've got this uh, cord lock that you can use to adjust the length of it. We actually sell these separately just because so many people requested that we sell them separately. It's a nice lanyard. Here's the holster. I'm going to put the light in that in just a second and talk about it and some other stuff that you have in here. Here is a battery tube if you want to use CR123s. So the light's compatible with either two CR123s or a single 18650, but because 18650s are slightly wider than CR123s, they include this, so you can either use this for two CR123 battery storage, but it also helps keep, it from, keep the uh, batteries from rattling around in the light. You don't have to use it, it's just an optional thing that you can use. Here's a diffuser. I find this super useful. I'm actually going to take it outside uh, when we go outside, but it just slips right onto the front. You know, with most of our manufacturers and with a lot of the other Olight products as well, you have to purchase the diffuser separately. So it's kind of nice that in the, uh, the base package they include the diffuser. And then you have the light itself. So we're going to set that to the side and uh, actually show you the holster. So it's a pretty cool holster. They've been using this style for a while, and it's a nice setup. So you've got on the side, you got these little slots to store batteries. So you can take a couple spare batteries with you or throw an accessory in there, or a small pocket knife or even one of their other little flashlights. You got these couple of pockets that you can put just about whatever you want in there. Nice secure attachment point on the back. You've got the hole on the top and a hole on the bottom. And I'll show you why in just a second. I actually forgot about one more thing. You've got some spare O-rings if you happen to need those. Those are in the holster if you're looking for those. Nice strong metal uh, D-ring attachment point on there. Actually, that might be plastic. Whatever it is, it feels pretty strong and solid. <laughs> it's a good material, whatever it is. And then you've got a hook and loop attachment on the back. And then you've got a slot you can slide onto your belt or pack or wherever else. But it's a nice solid feel to it. Nice rigid holster. You know, we sell a lot of lights like this to police departments and other guys that are just in heavy use situations. And they like these holsters. You know, they end up using them. Uh, instead of replacing them like with a lot of the other lights that we have. Uh, so anyway, the light slides down in there, and then you've got this flap that goes over the top, and you can see why it has the hole. It actually covers up the tail switch. And then you have the hole on the bottom, because when it's in the holster, you can actually use the light. So if you want to have some area lighting, you know, you have this attached to your belt or pack, and you want to light up the ground in front of you, you can just hit that switch, and it's going to light up the ground uh, in front of you. And it's kind of nice to also be able to see if you accidentally hit that switch and turn the light on, it'll be real obvious that the light's on in the holster. So it's a really nice holster. They did a good job with it. They've been using this style for a while and uh, people tend to really like it, throwing accessories all over the place. All right, let's take a closer look at the light itself. So really cool light. They did a lot of nice things on it. They improved the switch. I'm actually going to take that off so I can show it to you. Uh, you know, the previous ones had kind of smaller switches on there. Let me see. I've probably got one on my desk. Yes, I do. <laughs> I didn't have this planned, but conveniently, I have uh, flashlights all over the place. I got no light sitting right here with the old style switch. So you can see it's a lot smaller on there. And a lot of the previous ones, they didn't even have these parts that jutted out. Uh, so you couldn't tail stand on it. This one has a combination of the smaller switch and tail standing. So that's kind of nice. 
but this one has this really nice large switch. So it's got a nice soft feel to it, but you still got some tactile feedback on there. And then you can still tail stand. If you want to tail stand, it still, still tail stands really easily. And this tail standing, unlike a lot of other lights, it doesn't really get in the way. So, I mean, you still really easily, you can get to it pretty much pressing it however you want to, you know, any kind of configuration, you're going to get the momentary and then a little bit further press, you're going to get the constant on. So it's a really nice switch. They did a really good job with that. Really good threads on there. So you've got square threads like they're doing on pretty much all of their lights. So they wear really well. They have great contact and uh, they seal really well. You have this uh, combat grip ring that they call it, and it also does anti-roll. But the idea is that if you're using this with a handgun or anything like that, it just makes it a little bit easier to hold. You can remove that if you want. You've got the pocket clip on there. You can remove that as well. Lots of heat sinking up here on the head. So you've got a ton of surface area. So it does good with dissipating the heat. It is going to drop the output after about five minutes, just like pretty much every other light we sell, especially when you get into the 1000 lumen range, just because of heat. You don't want it to build up and damage the LED and circuitry. And they actually call that out, which is kind of nice. Uh, I think we've got in the user manual, I think that's what I threw on the ground. <laughs> yeah, here it goes. So in the user manual, they have the ANSI spec tables. And I've said this in some other Olight videos, but this is something that I really respect that Olight does because most manufacturers do not. So the ANSI FL1 uh, specifications, which is what all the major manufacturers are using, says that the run times are going to be down to 10% of the original output. So if it says it's 1,000 lumens, the run time is going to be when it gets to 100 lumens. Now, Olight actually calls out and says that, hey, it's going to be 1,020 lumens for five minutes, and then we're going to drop the output to 600 lumens for uh, because of heat, and then it's going to be at that for 55 minutes. I really like that they do that. And they also even include a runtime graph. So they'll show you exactly what it's going to do. It's going to drop down after about five minutes, and then you got a few more minutes where it's going to drop down to 600, and then you got that constant output of the 600 lumens. Pretty much every manufacturer is doing that same thing, but you can see exactly how the Olight does it. So I really respect that they do that. It's a very nice feature that they're including on uh, all their new manuals. We got some good information in there. Definitely worth taking a look at that. Let me actually take the head off so we can get a look at the inside of that. And we'll take a look at the LED and everything. Lots of threads on there. So there's the inside of the battery tube and the inside of the head. And then there is the LED down in there. So let's get a closer look at that. I don't know how well it's going to show up. But uh, you can kind of see on there. So your traditional LED, let me grab another flashlight. I've always got a bunch of them sitting on my desk. You can kind of see that the uh, it has a dome over the LED. So you got that clear plastic, I think it's plastic, over the dome or on the uh, LED itself. Let's see if I can get it to focus in on that a little bit better. Come on, camera. There we go. You can see that clear plastic dome over the uh, die of the LED. So these are now called the Cree XPL High LEDs. Olight was doing this in-house for a while. Where what they were doing is they were taking those other style LEDs and removing that plastic part on there. And that makes a super concentrated, really great beam distance beam. Well, they've actually been working with Cree, and Cree has developed an LED that they don't have to do that anymore. So what they did is instead of putting that bubble dome, that half circle on there, they're putting just a flat dome on there. So it makes a really nice concentrated beam. It still protects the LED, doesn't really mess with the tin at all, and uh, you get that great beam distance. So typically in a light this size, you know, this size reflector with uh, without uh, having the de-domed or with the flat dome on there, you know, the LEDs were going to give you, or light like this was going to give you probably around 300 beam, 300 meters of beam distance. So on this one, you're at 436 meters of beam distance. Really nice improvement, and that's all mostly due to that different LED. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put a battery in here and uh, show you the interface and everything. And the battery that I'm going to use is the Olight 3600 milliamp hour 18650. People always ask us about our best batteries. These are currently our best batteries. Highest capacity, really great runtime. They come with a nice little storage case, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and slide that in there, put the head back on. And as always, we have bundles on the site where you can get batteries and chargers and all that kind of stuff, save you a little bit of money. All right, so the interface on this thing, lightly press the rear switch and you get momentary, click it all the way for constant on. 
And again, it's a really good feeling switch. I really like what they did with the new switches on these. It feels really good. You got good feedback on it. It's a nice soft feel, but uh, it feels good when you press it. So to switch the modes, loosen and tighten the head, and it'll cycle through your three different outputs. It does have mode memory, so we're going to leave it in low, and we're going to turn it off, turn it back on, and you can see it's going to go back into low. Now, I really like this part of the interface. Twisting the head and all that, I don't really ever do because the way I keep my light set up is you press and you have the momentary or the uh, constant on of the, the mode you had it in last. Double press and you have instant access to max output, always. Triple press, you have strobe. I don't really use that, but it's nice to have that in there. So from off, you can get instant access to whatever you had it in last your max output, and your strobe. So it's a really cool interface. You know, it's all one-handed. You can do all that with one hand, really quickly get to your different outputs. And of course, you can set the memorized mode to the max output if you, uh, if you prefer to have that. So again, real quick on the interface, lightly press the rear switch, you get the momentary, click it all the way for constant on, loosen and tighten the head to cycle between your different outputs. And then for the, uh, the instant access to the other outputs, you, once is going to be your memorized output, twice is going to be max, three times is going to be strobe. Pretty cool interface. I like the way that they have it set up. It works really, really well. Oh, one other thing they have is you can see this bezel on here. So this really, really thick stainless steel bezel, you can see it's going to be able to handle a whole lot of abuse. You got that really thick ring on there, so you're going to be able to handle impacts and dropping and just about anything you can throw at this thing. Uh, one of these days, I'm probably going to do a, an abuse video on this light because they say how durable it is, and I'm going to see how actually durable it is. But uh, I've beat the crap out of my M22, and it can handle a whole lot, so I'm sure the M23 is going to be even better. So there you go. That's the M23. Really cool light. They did a great job on it. Great beam distance, great output, super solid construction. This thing is really solid. Feels great, and it's not too heavy, but uh, it's a nice, durable, very well-made light, and you got that nice new switch. You got the good interface. You got a bunch of nice features on there. So we're going to go ahead and take the Olight M23 outside, and we'll show you how it does outside. All right, we're outside with the Olight M23 Javelot. Got the big 40 mag light that I always use as a control. Let's go ahead and try out the mag light first. Tree right there is about 30 feet away. Got a dock house down there on the lake that's about 100 feet away. That's the mag light. All right, here is the javelot. So 30 feet, 100 feet. That's low. Let's try medium. There's medium. Doing pretty darn well. And there's high. There's your max output. Now you can start seeing the potential of this light. And we're going to go out to a longer distance in just a little bit. But let me zoom in just so you can see how well everything is lit up down there. So really intense, tightly focused beam. It's not gonna light up a really wide area with the hot spot, that bright part in the center, but you can see how it can do some great, great distances. It's still definitely a usable spill. So a nice wide spill that's lighting up a wide area, and then you got that intense focus hot spot that's gonna give you some really great distance. Actually shine it around a little bit. And then you got that really good interface where you can have the low, and then when you need it, you just do a double tap, and you've got that max output. And then strobe also, if you happen to need strobe. Shine that around a little bit. I like the Javelot series a lot. I was never really much of a thrower. I preferred lights to light up a wide area once, but then I started messing with them and I saw the potential of what a thrower can do. You know, normally you had to get some big clunky thing to get any kind of really good distance, but with these new uh, D-domed or domeless LEDs, you can see what you can do with the relatively compact light. So let's go ahead and try it a longer distance and we'll show you what it can do with some more space. All right, I got some more space to try out the M23 Javelot. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Boat right there is about 20 feet away. Got a couple targets set up out there. First one is at 50 yards. One on the left is at 100 yards. The tree line beyond is at 130 yards. Those signs are at about 65 yards. Lights up all of that really, really well. Just to show you the other outputs, there's your low. That actually lights up pretty much everything really well. Doesn't make it out to 100, 130 yards all that great, but uh, that's not a whole lot of lumens. <laughs> it's making it out to 50 yards very well. And then the medium, 
does very well. And then the high does extremely well. So you can imagine this thing can do even longer distances, no problem at all. Very tight, very focused beam. You're not gonna light up a massive amount of space with that hot spot, but you can see the kind of punch you get, that kind of distance that you get. And then for a good, probably 30 or 40 yards, the spill will kind of tilt the hot spot down. You can see the spill lights up a pretty wide area itself. Very cool light. If you like distance, the uh, Olight Javelot series is really, really hard to beat. This guy, the larger M3XS, you've got the new R20 Javelot, whole bunch of lights in that series, and they're all very, very good. Since the M23 is replacing the M22, I went ahead and grabbed an M22 so you can see what those look like side by side. So here is the M22, here is the M23. So you can see the difference in the focus of the beams. Pretty much the same lumen output, but definitely a different beam profile on those. Much more concentrated on that M23. So there you go. That is the Olight M23 Javelot. If you like it, you can buy it from me at goinggear.com. Any questions or comments, you can reach me in the comments or any of my guys at goinggear.com. If you like the video, please subscribe. Do a lot of gear and flashlight videos. As always, get going and start something. Thanks for watching.